We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC from Jordan Hare Stadium on the campus in Auburn, Alabama. The 114th meeting between these old SEC foes, the Bulldogs of Georgia and the Tigers of Auburn. This has been a tumultuous 10 day period for Cam Newton, for Auburn, for the SEC, and indeed for all of college football. Allegations have been made, investigations have been launched, reputations have been tarnished, insinuations have been leveled. And the truth seems enshrouded somehow in a thick gray fog. It's in there somewhere, isn't it? Two hours ago, the man whose ability to play today has been in question, Cam Newton, made an enthusiastic jog through the Tiger fans as he made his way into Jordan-Hare Stadium, out through the tunnel, and on to Pat Dye Field. Students had been led on just prior to his arrival. He gathered his teammates at midfield, exhorted them one last trip to the student section, and then 30 minutes ago, the public address announcer announced the starting lineups. And quarterback from College Park, Georgia, Glenn Junior College, number two, Cam Newton. Well, they seemed to care, didn't they? That part of the puzzle answered. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson along in a moment. We know now that he's going to start. Uh, this was a tough, difficult decision for all. Yeah, I think it was. I mean, it was a weird week all around. I came in Thursday for my normal practice. Gene Chizik has always been generous. Come in and watch. It was closed. And then our Friday meetings, we peppered him with 15, 20 questions, and we got no comment on anything. It was strange, and in fact, the main question, who is your starting quarterback on Friday? We got a no comment. Yeah, there was a no comment from Chizik. And then we asked, is there any question about your quarterback? for which you will answer anything other than no comment. No comment. <laughs> Cameron Newton. Cam Newton topic of so much innuendo speculation there was enough uh, in the papers and on the internet to fill a bathtub let's go to Tracy who's with Gene Chizik thanks Vern coach we heard the public addresser announce Cam Newton's name officially will he start today oh yeah he's our quarterback today for Auburn University why did this decision come down to a game time decision well uh, can't get into the particulars but he's a quarterback today for Auburn University there's been a lot of distractions, obviously, surrounding this team. How have you handled it with them in terms of staying focused? Really haven't had to do much, Tracy. we got a great class of seniors. They've been focused all week. They're ready to win this football game. Thanks a lot. Good luck tonight. Vern, back to you. Well, Gary, understandably, that's more than we heard Gene just yeah. say yesterday. Your reaction to what he just said? Well, I think you got to look at the people involved here. I mean, these are honorable people that love Auburn, care about the SEC and treasure college football. They really do. And I don't think this is an in-your-face emotional decision. I think this is thought out, and I think the word is fairness. And they decided to trust their people and go with this. But you know, the 2010 feel-good story around Cameron Newton has been almost a nightmare and kind of give you a peek inside. I mean, that's what I kind of do, try to take you down to the field. I go back to being on the elevator last night. I rode down the elevator with an old Auburn grad. He had his blue and orange on. He had his little, looked like his grandsons. And I go, you don't look happy. You're 10 and 0. And he says, you know, Gary, I just pray Auburn didn't do anything wrong. The doors opened. The three of them said War Eagle, and they went out on the night. I think that's what says about college football in the South. They love their game. And there is indeed a game to be played. It's a game of consequence. In the West, Auburn can cinch a trip to Atlanta with a victory in this game against Georgia. That'll do it. They will go back to the SEC championship game. And on the other side, 
Georgia 5-5 five and five, trying to get bowl eligible. Gary, what do you expect from the Auburn team knowing now that they've got Cam Newton for this Well, game? more of the same, obviously. They've got a great player, probably the most valuable player in college football. But I think the real care that Auburn has to have is the rest of the guys don't stand around and wait for Cam Newton to make plays. Georgia's too good. And what about Georgia coming in 5-5? Five and five? I don't think Georgia could have had it any better. They're 5-5. Five and five. There's no way they want to win this game without Cam Newton. They're happy they get to face Auburn at their best. All right. This, as we said, is the 114th meeting. Georgia has won the last four. Look at the difference in total points scored. 17-78. To 17-22, first game played in 1892. Another beautiful day in the Deep South, 68 degrees. Winds are calm. The forecast for mostly sunny. Georgia won the toss. They have deferred, so Auburn will get the ball. Blair Walsh will kick off for the Bulldogs, and we are at long last underway. DeMond, Washington, number 14. Gets to the 19, maybe the 20. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> guess who's on the field? Shortly. No, he's on the field. Cam Newton. From the 20, first down 10. Dodges the first tackler and the second. Now he's got a lot of room as he comes left. Knocked out of bounds after a 13-yard gain to the 33-yard line. Akeem Dent with the tackle flag down at the 35. Yeah, this must have been some downfield blocking problem at the end of this play. One of the things about Cam Newton is you cannot go for the knockout blow on him. He is just too quick and he dodges him. You got to wrap him up. On the defense, number 18. 15 yards to the end of the run. First down. Heard the call from Hubert Owens, our referee today. It was on Bakari Rambo that time. One of the two safeties that play for Georgia, one of their big hitters. Ball is spotted at the 48-yard line. Left side. This is the freshman Michael Dyer. Little pirouette in the front of the linebacker, and he spins for an additional three yards and a first down 10. Dyer, fresh from a 180 outfit two weeks ago against Ole Miss. Now you'll see Auburn start to speed it up. Near hash, after a couple first downs, they really try to go fast. They'll try left guard this time. That's Dyer again, wearing number five. Now well, Cam Newton's numbers through 10 games, and uh, in the most recent game, he did not play in the second half. 15 rushing touchdowns, 15 yards per completion. They are indeed gaudy statistics. Second down and nine. Ontario McCaleb is in the backfield behind Newton. Quick flip, near side. Terrell Zachary. Now let's take a look at the uh, Auburn offense presented by Chick-fil-A. Zimba making his 49th start today. That equals an Auburn school record. Barry Pugh and the rest. Adam Smith, Dyer, Zachary, and Cody Burns, former Quarterback at wide receiver, third down and two. Got both tackles to the right side now. Zimba and Mosley lined up to the right side right here. That's their power. That's McCaleb in motion. 
And it's the way they go. Yeah. Look for the block from McCaleb. Here's Newton. Out of bounds at the one yard line. When you talk to Gus Miles on, he said one of our favorite formations has been bringing Zimba and Mosley 73 and 75 together. Mike Berry pulls around, and you can see Cam Newton gets it turned up field. He's just a monster. At the goal line, ruled out of bounds. And will they review this? My guess is yes. Ruled out of bounds, it's under review. We've got our camera set right on the goal line here, so if see if he crosses the plane. Of course, we can't tell from this angle whether his foot stepped out. The official's right on line there. He seems to see something touching the sideline. Let's see if he does. Boy, I, I, that's very I don't close. think so. That one could get overturned. Here's the view from behind, Gary. I think that's a touchdown. And you know, never underestimate the importance of this. Remember, was it our first year or second year, Vern, that mm -hmm. LSU game when they got it right down there against Florida and then they fumbled the very next snap? It was a huge play. Another look from the low angle. This seems to be the most definitive. Now the pylon, his knee hits the pylon. And the ball seemed to be inside the knee. Yeah. And that appears to be a touchdown. Well, that was a, a nice uh, drive. Five plays, four of them runs. That's one thing Georgia and Todd Grantham, their defensive coordinator, was afraid of. He said, there's no way we can simulate Cam Newton in practice. Well, we're having a lengthy discussion. Retired referee Doyle Jackson is upstairs in the replay booth today. You know what, if uh, Vern, as we wait for this call, one thing I'm thinking of is I'm Aaron Murray over there, Georgia. I'm not surprised. I knew this was going to be a shootout. I mean, I, this you're going to have to score if you're Georgia 35 points to win this game. You're only a freshman, but you got to know. Now a flag has been thrown from the far side. Excuse me, Gary. Don't see that every day. I think Marcus Doughton was uh, engaged in some conversation. That's Bakari Rambo. It's not going to be a long penalty. Half the distance no. is about an inch. We still don't have a call from Hubert Owen. Now, the interesting thing is that if it's a touchdown, then it obviously would be on the kickoff. Right. This is one thing about replay. They have to do it faster. Yes. It really just takes the air out of great plays. We see a great play there, and we're all waiting around for this. And they're still huddling. Oh, goodness. Take another look at Cam Newton's run with a well, hold on. Here we are. After further review. Video evidence shows that the ball carrier broke the plate of the goal line. Crowd going out of bounds. Touchdown. Run right at your two tackles. Best player in college football has the football. Sportsman-like conduct. Number 32 on the offense on the Auburn bench. 
That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff 15 yards. Well, Newton gets his 16th rushing touchdown of the year. And Eric Smith got one on the bench. On the bench. Back up H back. Wonder if he told the officials to hurry up with the call. <laughs> no. <laughs> we could get one. <laughs> Yeah, that took a while. That's a big penalty, though, now. I mean, everybody knows it's a shootout type of game. They notified Gene Chiswick first. Well, well Chiswick is now talking to Eric Smith. about how he talked to us on Friday, just like that. Uh, yeah, but that was a comment. <laughs>
Well, you can talk about Auburn's outstanding offensive line, but Georgia's offensive line are veterans and doing a wonderful job, too. I mean, their record doesn't show it, but this Georgia offense is putting up points and has really found themselves once they got number eight back, A.J., because, you know, really, he's the second most valuable player in this league is A.J. Saw the graphic, five consecutive games, 30 points plus. Murray is hit, and then he is dropped after he's hit a second time. Nosa Igwe got there. Not a sack master. That's his first full sack of the season for Igwe. Well, usually you put your eyes on number 90, Nick Fairley. He's got a couple guys looking at him. Get a rush from the outside that by time by Darren Bates, and that really forced Aaron Murray up in the pocket for the sack. Loss of seven, second and 17. Murray, man open, caught. Orson Charles, his high school teammate, and the starting tight end for the Bulldogs. They were teammates at Plant High School in Tampa where they won a state championship. Carter, Clayton, Fairley, who's making an All-American move this year. Equay had the last sack. Next up, Stevens, Bynes, and Bates, who's been out a couple of weeks with an injury. And the secondary, Washington, Etheridge, McNeil, and Nico Thorpe. Ted Roof, defensive coordinator, third and three. Blitz, crossing pattern. Inside, A.J. Green, first down at the 40. Well, I tell you, Nick Fairley on that quick pass was right in Murray's face. But outside, A.J. Green gets inside so easily from Bell that time. And Murray just does a great job, Aaron does. He gets pressure. And boy, that's the play that a few coaches have told. Oh, it looks like they got their helmets stuck on that play. The face masks were stuck. A couple coaches have told me they believe that Nick Fairley is driving the quarterbacks into the ground and to be aware of it. First down, Caleb King. A little bit of a struggle at left tackle. He picks up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. And a flag is down. Thrown on the far side near the 32. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense number 14. After the play was over, personal foul on the offense number 12. Those penalties canceled. The play stands. It'll be second down. Well, Tavares King is number 12 for Georgia. And DeMond Washington, Mark Richt, is going to get in King's face. Yeah, and Mark is saying, listen, you have to, you had the penalty. We had 15 yards. If you don't retaliate, we're going to be 15 yards closer to yep. the goal line. With Sean Ely is on the field for the first time now. We'll see him and Caleb King throughout the afternoon. Play action. Oh, boy. Murray is still upright. Bates missed it, and Murray throws it away. That was a big play. Devin Bates had him wrapped up and did not secure the tackle. It's the second time Bates has come from the outside as a linebacker, come off the edge, watch him unblocked on a bootleg play, which makes sense. On those type of bootleg plays, the quarterback is assigned to the outside linebacker. And Aaron Murray did a great job of getting rid of it, basically made a 10-yard gain by not losing the 10 yards. Now the Bulldogs have a third and nine. Three wide right, one split left. Quarterback draw, goes left. 
close. I don't believe he got enough. Yeah, but this is obviously from the call. This is four down territory. They know, I believe, Mark Rick feels that Auburn is going to put points on the board, and he's going to have to convert some fourth down plays in this game. That was with Sean Ely and Nico Thorpe trying to make the tackle. And uh, it appears that Georgia will go for the first down. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That might be too many men in the huddle. They're going to have to take a yep, timeout. Yep. And they do. A.J. Green suddenly realized he was the not-so-odd man out, and he needed to get out of there. But... They got the call in time. Look at over here. Coaches are going, we got too many, we got too many, and right away a timeout to save the five yard penalty. First timeout taken by Georgia. Fourth and two when we come back to Auburn. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Macy's. Verizon, K Jewelers, and by Dr. Pepper. Georgia ball at the 31 yard line, fourth down a little more than one. Sean Chappas is the fullback, number 49, and Ely is the running back. Yeah. You know, uh, Georgia in the past likes to slip their fullback out in the flat on these type of plays. That's a long yard and a half. Let's see if they try to slip the fullback out in the flat. Fullback wears number 49. He's the short man in the eye. Orson Charles goes up tight to the left side. Now comes in motion. Play fake, Murray. A lot of time, deep. A.J. Green, touchdown, Georgia! Uh, I don't think that was the fullback. I just got to... <laughs> I was about to congratulate you for your astute analysis. Oh, I got the pass part right. <laughs> Hey, you know you need points. You know you got a great player. Might as well give it to him, huh? Well, A.J. Green all but undressed. DeMond Washington, number 14 for Auburn on the play. Yeah, I think he felt he had help back here from a safety. Here's DeMond Washington one-on-one -on -one right there. Let's see what happens. He feels he's got a safety. Where did the safety go? Oh, just bit over the middle on the play that time, and they got an easy one. You got number two, we got number eight. That's a good matchup. It has been, as we said, a tumultuous 10 days in the life of Cam Newton. Let's take you through the timeline. November 1st, week ago Thursday, first allegations of a pay to play uh, scenario on the 6th. Newton threw four touchdowns at Chattanooga, said I did nothing wrong. Next development came on the ninth. Allegations that Cam was involved in academic fraud at Florida and faced expulsion. There was more in the drama. Coach Gene Chizik and athletic director Jay Jacobs defended Newton very emotionally, insisted that he would be the starting quarterback today. On the 10th, Mississippi State confirms contacting the SEC regarding Cam Newton. On the 12th, Cecil Newton allegedly admitted that he asked for money without Cam's knowledge. And here we are. There was a council uh, among the Auburn Athletic Department. We were told that the NCAA was part of the conversation and uh, a very conscious decision to have Cam Newton play in this game this afternoon. And here comes DeMond Washington. He's out to the 27. And for more on Cam Newton, here's Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, Auburn's 1985 Heisman Trophy winner, Bo Jackson, on the sideline right before kickoff. He went up to Cam Newton, gave him a big hug, and reminded him to stay focused. He's been very involved on the sideline so far, giving some advice to several players, especially after that last drive, guys. 
All right, thank you, Tracy. That uh, news update was uh, for the benefit of all of those who might have been stuck on a dead in the water cruise ship south of San Diego <laughs> and didn't know about Camden. Aren't you Camden. afraid of doing that? I can't believe you're going to do that. Oh, anymore. I'm going to do it forever oh, and ever. <laughs> Keep my feet on the ground. <laughs> First down and ten. There's a little handoff out to the 31 yard line. 7 7 ball game. Murray getting some medical attention over on the Georgia sideline. And now a jersey change. You can see he's got the uh, chin. Chin. Remember, Hudson Mason, a true freshman, is his backup. And Nick Fairley is going to the locker room, by the way. He sure is. Heading south. Newton. They slipped it to the right side. It's Ontario McCaleb. And McCaleb can flat fly. Uh, little nifty ball handling. There is, however, a flag back at the 35. Yeah, it's coming back. I got a feeling here that Cam Newton practiced all week because this takes a lot of practice. Look at the timing here. It's basically the Statue of Liberty play. Yep. Boise State did it. Watch, they're going to throw it one way and slip it the other way at the same time. Got holding outside, I believe it was on Brandon Mosley right there. Holding. Offense. Number 75. That penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Second down. Well, that wipes out a 40 yard gain by McCaleb. And a moment ago, as we mentioned, fairly going to the locker room. Yeah, and he has to get back out on the field. They were checking his shoulder. When I was looking at him on the uh, looking at him on the bench down there and then he runs in. He's I think their second most important player on the field. Second down and 12. After the penalty on Mosley. Nothing there. Great job that time. Justin Houston who is having a terrific season for Georgia made the tackle. More flags down. Getting a little chippy, I think. And, and I tell you, it's being led by Mark Richt. And uh, we'll go through the lineups presented by Chick fil A. Here's a Gamble, Dent, Robinson, and Houston. Cummings, Ogletree, Rambo, and Boykin. Had my eye on Mark Richt all through Personal this game. foul. Number 57 on the offense. Unnecessary roughness. That penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. Third down. Hmm. And and Mark has been very animated on the sidelines about penalties, about his defense. That's his most involved. I, I really got the feeling he, he thinks his team is, as he told us, it's much better than their record, obviously, right. but that they can win this football game and make something out of this season. That penalty was called on the right guard. You might uh, yeah, think he, of it as Byron Isom. He pronounces it Baron. He headbutted as he get. He got up out of the stance and headbutted. Watch this. See the headbutt right there. Here's Newton back deep across the middle. That uh -oh, one wobbled. Dropped. Intercepted. Picked up by Bakari Rambo, number 18. Newton picked off. There's also a flag down. He is all the way down to the one yard line. There is a flag in the backfield. Yeah, I think it's going to be holding on Auburn, though, and it's not going to come Hold. back. 73 on the offense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play stands. Well, you can't throw a football any better than this, but as we talked about in the open, you're going to see the squaring come right across right in the middle. It's a well-thrown ball. But there's a little bit of nerves going on. Emory Blake right through his hands. And you know what I've talked about is when you have a great player, you get the feeling like, well, with Cam, we can't lose. And that's not the case. This league is much too tough. Rambo with the interception. He is ruled to have stepped out of bounds at the nine, where Georgia has it first and goal. And, and Nick Fairley can't be out there. Caleb King is the running back, deep back in the eye. Play action, Murray. Deep in the middle, got him open. Touchdown. Sean Chappas, there's your fullback. I was one play early. 
They love to throw the fullback. And what did Mike Bobo tell us? We love the matchups. We think we have some big plays against these guys. One turnover, one play. Georgia touchdown. Walsh with the extra point. Cuts it inside the left upright. Cam Newton picked off by Bakari Rambo to set up this play. That's just too easy. Even Ari Murray said, I haven't seen many that easy in this league. Now it's time to look at our Home Depot tools for success. There's different ways to use a great player. Here's Green right here. Now watch it. Two receivers attract three defenders. And what that means is the fullback is matched up on the linebacker. You run a play action pass right at him. The linebacker takes a step in. Easy touchdown. That's how you design plays. That's why those coaches stay there till 10, 30, 11, 12 at night. Perfect call from Mike Bova. Is that why you're not in coaching? <laughs> well, Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I couldn't get along with anybody either. <laughs> <laughs> From that the was 30. nice, though. Wasn't that nice? Yeah, it was. Not if you're an Auburn fan, but if you're a fan of football and design and good coaching, that's a well-executed play. Just see that graphic. Uh, last year, Georgia, minus 16 in turnovers. And they have completely turned it around, if you don't mind. And they're plus eight for the year now. Here's DeMond Washington at the 15. And he does manage to reach the 25 yard line for more on Nick Fairley's circumstance. Here's Tracy. Guys, Nick Fairley just came running out of the locker room. As you mentioned, a right shoulder injury. Renowned doctor, Dr. James Andrews, on hand, checking him out. They added some extra padding underneath that right shoulder pad. They do expect him to go back in. I think. I think that's a play when he drove his shoulder into the ground pursuing on that third down play. First down 10. Auburn trailing 14 to 7 midway through quarter number one. Cam Newton question mark as to whether he would start in the last 36 hours. And uh, he did start as you know. Here's McCaleb going right. Gene Chiswick very emotionally on Wednesday said he is our starting quarterback. And then uh, it was really an unusual week because I'm sure after a conference with all the athletic department officials, athletic director Jay Jacobs, I'm sure the president, they decided to go into what Tony Barnhart called the lockdown mode. No comment was the operative phrase around here for the last two and a half days. Second down. Newton got it at the 30 it'll be third down that was Justin Houston the SEC sack leader Justin Houston and what Georgia has I think that Auburn noticed on tape is speed top to bottom this Georgia defense probably what runs as well as any defense probably on a par with LSU third and five Darvin Adams is the wide receiver to the left. Two others top right. Mario Fannin comes out. Here's Newton back to throw. Now he'll take off. Stiff arm. First down. He better be careful yeah. on that one. And he got warned. That looked like more like a right and jab. It, it was unnecessary too. Uh, Cam does a good job. No pressure from the Georgia defense right here. And Cam needs to be very careful. That is a 15-yard penalty. If I bet the next one is. That's yep. my bet. 14-yard gain, and it stands. On first down, here's Newton. Play action. Goes deep left side. Fan in the air. And he drops it. I'll tell you, Auburn is a tight football team. They've had two personal fouls, a big holding call, now two drop passes. 
One led to a touchdown. This would have been a touchdown. That's a 14-point turnaround. Remember, the holding penalty was a huge call coming down the sideline. That wiped out a 40-yard gain. Second down and 10. McCaleb darts to the right, has to circle back, and it's going to be third and 11 or 12, depending on the spot. That was well defended by Georgia. Todd Grantham, their defensive coordinator, talked to him on phone and on the field, and he said, you must know what each formation, the weapons and the plays they can run. You got to divide up the offense. You can't try to defend everything against all their formations. You got to divide it up. Third and 11, four wideouts. One running back. Four-man rush, little screen to Fannin, got it. But he's going to be caught short of the first down as Mario Fannin reaches the 50-yard line. Bakari Rambo makes the tackle, and the punting unit will come on. This has been an area where Gene Chizik has expressed his displeasure. He's gone back and forth with two punters this year. He's got uh, Ryan Shoemaker, a senior, who started the season. Then he gave way to Stephen Clark. And now it's Shoemaker who's back on there. Logan Gray back to return it. This is a good one. Gray will let it bounce. Oh, he missed it. That's uh, three big plays. That's a 20-yard play again. To Sharvin Bell, number 22, right in his mitts. This is going to be in the one or two yard line. My goodness, Auburn can feel the pressure. You know, the pressure doesn't start till November. We've seen this year after year in college football. These teams that are ranked up at the top can just feel it. I thought that first drive signified that they were ready. Yeah. They're ready, but so is Georgia. From the 20 and a seven point lead. First down and 10. Aaron Murray, bandaged chin and all blitz coming from the corner, but they break through it. It's Ely out to the 30 and perhaps a little more. Let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Vern, I've got a super fly in the ointment alert underway. Andy Dalton, the TCU quarterback, is going to be hit by Rob Andrews of San Diego State. He fumbles. It's recovered by Jerome Long in the end zone. They reviewed it. It's a touchdown. The Aztecs up 14 to nothing, though it's early. Back to you. Think there's any interest in what's going on there in Boise State after they demolished Idaho last night, huh? Yeah, that's another one of those great second-year coaches, Brady Hoke at San Diego State, doing a great job there. Fairley's back on the field. Here's Murray, play fake. Again, he's got oh. all kinds of time. One and team's making the catches and one yeah. team isn't. Well, one team has A.J. Green and the other doesn't. This is about as bad as you can throw a crossing route. Fairley got to Murray again. Let's Here's Fairley, number 90. Yeah, let's see if he drives him into the ground again. That's what... Uh, at the end of the play, but you could see A.J. Green makes a nice play. Let's see if he drives him into the ground. See, that's the oh, play. Yeah. The NFL really has cleaned that up. College football needs to address that play. Now, we asked Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, point blank. You did. Had he been notified by the league of complaints from other coaches? And he said, no. Here's Ely. And Ely scoots down the sidelines and out of bounds. It's another mistake by Auburn. They did not align well. This was a gimme first down. Look at the edge here. No one outside playing the edge. No one to set the edge. Georgia has the perfect play on. Josh Bynes is trying to get his guys loaded up. This is a 10-yard sprint in touch football. Auburn making way too many mistakes early. Josh Bynes, one of the leaders defensively, has been adamant about their lack of prowess in securing tackles. And he was the guy who missed one then. First down, play fake again. Murray deep right side. A.J. Green, Demond Washington. Oh. Easy touchdown. Easy touchdown. Eight. Slight 
nudge by well, A.J. Green there. There was that. Let me put it this way. It was a professional nudge right there. That's how the guys do it in the big leagues, right there. DeMond Washington was defending, and for the second time, A.J. Green wins the battle. He underruns the ball, means he knows the ball's in front of him, so he waits and watch the subtle nudge. Little nudge, and then go get it. Aaron Murray threw it. 21-7. NFL on CBS regional coverage tomorrow. Cincinnati Indy, the lead game early. Jets at Cleveland, Tennessee, Miami, Houston, Jacksonville, and then the late game, Kansas City at Denver. That's the NFL lineup tomorrow, and it all begins with JB and the guys. The NFL today at 12 noon Eastern time tomorrow on CBS. Well. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, Georgia can play with anyone, and had they beaten Florida, with South Carolina's loss, they, they'd be playing to play in the in the SEC East for the in Atlanta. Now Mark, Mark Rick, Rick is still sick yeah, about that, yeah, right? Yeah, telling us in a phone conversation on Friday, he, he knew what was at stake oh, yeah. in the uh, loss to Florida. Well, Georgia, an explosive opening quarter, 21 points. Mentioned that uh, offensively, they've scored 30 points plus. In the last five games, here's Blair Walsh. DeMond Washington, number 14. Man, let's take another look at A.J. Green's touchdown catch. Flag is down. Let's take a peek on the bottom right hand part of the screen right there. Watch the arm extend. Watch it back and forth, arm extend. A.J. Green. Now, usually if you want to get away with this, you have to kind of push with your elbow. You see that extended arm? That was enough that Devin Washington had no chance for this one. It was well played, and A.J. ran through the ball, which is exactly what you're supposed to do. Not run past it and turn around. He judged it beautifully. Four catches all ready. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 23 on the kicking team. That penalty is 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. Chikar Hamilton is the uh, fellow guilty of the foul. Auburn trailed by 17 points earlier in this season. They came from behind to defeat Clemson. They were down 13 in their win against South Carolina. But you know what's not on that graphic? Not when they were the number two team in the country and all the pressure was on them. We will see how they will respond. We've still got 53 seconds to go opening quarter. Newton led them on an opening drive touchdown. It uh, was like a knife through butter. They just zipped down the field. Here's Newton. Yep, got nothing, him. Nothing. Apri Jones, number 93. Jones uh, was uh, substituted in in the Florida game. He did not start, came in, did a good job in that football game. Three tackles, but on this one, it looks like the Georgia front five, the outside linebackers and the three inside guys are winning so far. Second and 12. Now they look over at uh, the Auburn bench. Gus smells on. See, no hurry here. He wants to give his defense a rest until he gets a first down. Handoff, breakthrough, Michael Dyer. That looked like it was going to be a bunch more. I'll tell you, Hakeem Dent and Marcus Doughton are doing a nice job inside, too. Hakeem Dent is a tackling machine. Doughton was all over that one also. Auburn led 7-0, 21 unanswered. Two touchdown catches by A.J. Green from Aaron Murray. We'll return to Jordan-Hare Stadium. After this message and a word from your local station. We welcome you back to Jordan Hare Stadium on the campus 
of Auburn, Alabama. Georgia comes into town, this much anticipated game, and they grab control with 21 points in the first quarter. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, our entire CBS crew here in Auburn. Third down, eight. Time for Newton across the middle. Uh, tipped away. Interference. It's going to be interference. Cody Burns. That's 18 on 18. Bakari Rambo and Cody Burns. And uh, take a look, Gary, as he comes from the right side. On this play, Georgia had a spy, so Cam Newton had plenty of time to throw and a little bit too aggressive on the play for the Georgia defensive back. Pass interference. Defense number 18. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. The penalty carries an automatic first down. Rambo saying, who, me? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, you. That's what it called. Yep. And now after a first down, I think you'll now try to see the up-tempo game. Ontario McCaleb is uh, alongside Cam Newton. They have moved just across the 50. 21-7, Georgia. Got off to one five start, now at five and five. Oh. Newton <laughs> nailed. Well, with uh, Daryl Gamble's tackle, uh, the frustration continues now for Auburn. You know, it just seems to me, with all that's been going on for a week and a half, yeah. that we should be in the fourth quarter. This, it's it does it does uh, seem like that because the anticipation of coming to the stadium, right. will he play? Watching him, I actually think that's the way. Auburn feels in this football game. They're almost out of gas. They're so emotionally into the game, they haven't caught their second wind yet. Up the middle, Newton. Let's go back to New York. Here's Tim Brennan. Vern, yeah, back to you. Oh, yeah. All right, Tim, thank you. Third down and one. Here's Newton. Five yards back. He'll take it at right tackle, spins. First down at the 35. And a Quick mid-course correction. I said Georgia started one and five. It seemed like that to them. They started one and four, and then they got A.J. Green. He came back. Remember A.J. Green set out four games with a uh, NCAA-imposed suspension. But five and five now. Came back in their fourth loss in a row. That was to Colorado. So of course, uh, quick snap here. Here we go. Got it. Toss. McCaleb trying to turn the corner. Can't quite. Well, Georgia, A.J. Green suspended because he sold a jersey to an agent. Fessed up right away, said he knew when he completed the transaction, he had made a mistake. He paid a four-game suspended penalty. Their record without him, one and three, with him, four and two. And he gets to rest now. He's got two touchdown catches in this game. Got him. Blake, wow. first and goal. Got inside a Rambo. Emery Blake. Well, Emery Blake had the early drop, but this about as good a throw as you can make as a quarterback. This is on a line. Watch this throw. 35 yards like a bullet. Holy cow, that should not be illegal. A guy can throw like that and run and be 6'6", 250. <laughs> McCaleb trying to get around the corner, does. Touchdown, Auburn. Camera right on the line. And right over the line. That's that speed by Ontario McCaleb and the quick snap and the hurry up offense from Gus Melzahn's offense. McCaleb weighs in at 167. Had the big uh, tie breaking run of 70 yards in the win over LSU. Five straight games with a rushing touchdown. Let's take a look at the two key plays in this drive. Well, watch this throw. This is the one that everybody at the next level will say, ho, 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 ho. 
and then real quickly get up there, follow the pulling guard, and just outrun the defense to the corner. Power, arm, and speed. It is a spectacular mid-November Saturday in the loveliest village on the plains, Auburn, Alabama. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS provided by MetLife. You know, we're very privileged, Gary, you, me, Tracy, our crew, travel throughout the SEC, and it's, it's tough to decide favorite sites, isn't it? Uh, it is for me. It, it's wonderful all over college football, especially at this time of year in the South. Ain't bad, though, I'll tell you that. Well, this is on the short list, Auburn, Alabama. And it's been a very difficult week for them. There's uh, just a plethora of accusations flying back and forth. Uh, and the decision made is we will revisit throughout the afternoon to play Cam Newton in this game and the next. Boykin back to return it from the seven. Uh -oh. Uh oh Wow, he got popped up near the 32-yard line by Tisharvin Bell, but uh, for just that long, it looked like Boykin might be loose. And he's the guy that returns touchdowns on kickoffs. One of the fastest players on Georgia's team, and he turns it up right here. I thought he had a crease, and Bell makes the play. Bell hits people better than he catches the ball, doesn't he? <laughs> True. How about this for Georgia? 14 plays, 21 points. Handoff. Caleb King out near the 39-yard line. Rode the back of Clint Bowling, number 60. Well, Aaron Murray comes into this game as the other quarterback, right? right. I mean, that was the story of my life. Okay. So right now, he's six for eight for three touchdowns. The other quarterback has shown up to play. Well, you see the comparison. Newton three of five for 40 yards. Second down. Wildcat. And that's Brandon Smith. Number one. Brandon Smith, who in his career, now he missed three games with a concussion. He has been a starter for the Bulldogs at defensive back, wide receiver, running back, quarterback, and on special teams. He's a pretty good athlete. Third and five. Green wide left. Murray looks the other direction. Now, he'll run near side and shovels it out of bounds. He was outside the tackle box. Josh Bynes was chasing him. No flag, but there is a fourth down. Well, once he's out of the tackle yeah, box, he knows. It's legal. All he has to do is get it across the line of scrimmage there. And it's a positive play. I mean, this kid uh, thinks as for a freshman, I mean, Mark Rick could not stop raving about him. Now Quindarius Carr is back to return Drew Butler's punt. Butler number one in the country last year with a 48.5 average. He's in the top five this year up above 45. Fair catch. Carr backs up, grabs it. At the 13-yard line. How far was that one? We're going to know in a second. 48, 48 you know, yards. You know almost half of his punts have gone for more than 50 yards. That was a bad one for Butler. Only 48 yards. Puny. <laughs> we'll continue after this word from your local station. A 315-horsepower, 5.3-liter V8. 21 highway MPG. 20 inch wheels and a heart of chrome. The GMC Sierra Z60. 
Now get 6500 total value when you finance with Ally and get a 2011 GMC Sierra Z60 for 30300 Every day you face financial choices, large and small. When you make the right choices, you head in the right direction. At BB&T, we've spent more than 135 years sharing our knowledge, helping clients become more informed in all areas of their financial lives. With our checking and savings options and online and mobile banking, it's easier than ever to find the direction just right for you. Talk to us today about your banking needs and know how it feels to know more. BB&T. You're watching the Gulf Coast News Leader, WKRG News 5. It has been a long 10 days for the commissioner of the SEC, Mike Slive. In conversations with John Solomon of the Birmingham News and with our Tony Barnhart, uh, Commissioner Slive had this to say about the Cam Newton status. The only thing we made clear to Auburn is a decision about his eligibility is a decision that has to be made by the institution. And he added this. I hope that people will reserve judgment in fairness to the SEC, in fairness to the institutions, and most importantly, in fairness to the young man. I hope people will exercise thought and patience before making those decisions. I'm concerned about fairness, and this has to do with fairness. Couldn't agree more, yep. especially the last part. Everything involved, everyone involved. The schools, the conference, and college football, but most importantly for the Cam Newtons. Truth will come out eventually. First down and 10. 10.43 to go. Newton has a man open. That's Terrell Zachary, number 81. They move it five, six yards out to the 20-yard line in front of Brandon Boykin. You know what's uh, interesting about uh, Gus Malzahn's tutelage of Cam Newton is against the easiest teams, he decided not to run them. He got a lot of throwing in, and you can see now in a tough game when he's not able to run for a lot of yards so far, his passing has improved so much. It's paying off for the Auburn Tigers. Four out of six for 47 yards. And one big drop right in the hand. Oh, yes, that was Mario Feeney. Maybe two. That's right, earlier. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Whoa! A little polish on that one. That's uh, Darvin Adams. Mm -hmm. Well, we've, we've seen a variety of miscues from yeah. Auburn in this one. Remember, Emery Blake had the early drop for the touchdown. But Cam Newton had the interception on a perfect throw. One of those two draft passes, a holding penalty, personal fouls. Then they botched the punt inside the one yard line. First down and 10. Newton keeps it. That one didn't look right. It looked like a broken play. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Maybe Dyer and Newton misconnected. This was just a power play out of the spread. Watch the pulling guard come across and kick out. Let's see if the ball should have gone to Dyer. Yeah, he got a little confused. That just didn't feel and look right. They got a positive play out of it. Second down and five. And Georgia stops him. It'll be third down two, perhaps. Akeem Dent, who leads this uh, Georgia team in tackles. There's number 51. Came into this one with 94 tackles. So he's a uh, barring injury certain to go over 100 again this year. Third down two. Nice late sub there by Georgia. Not panicking at all. Three down defensively. They bring three. Cover over the left side is Newton in trouble. Got him. I'm, I'm telling you, give that one to Todd Grantham. Late before the snap, he brought on an extra defensive back, and I think he outwitted that Auburn offense. Keontae Tripp, number 31, I think, is the guy that finished it. Auburn on short yardage brings receivers out. A late matchup brings an extra DB, only a three-man line, and Keontae Tripp kind of cleans it up. Nobody open on the play. And so fourth down now. Brandon Smith is back, calls for the fair catch, takes it at the 35-yard line. 
Among those who was involved in that tackle was Keontae Tripp, who today is wearing number 31 in honor of Quentin Banks. Each uh, each week, a different member of the Bulldog team wears 31 for Quentin Banks, who had to give up his career with knee injuries. This guy was a high school classmate of Cameron Newton's. Watch fantasy football today to get the last minute news and analysis you need to set up your fantasy league lineup. It's live every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern only on CBSSports.com. 7.45 to go before the half. Georgia, 17 plays, 21 points. How about that bottom one, though? Eight plays of more than 10 yards. Right side, Ely cuts back. And uh, time now, as we do weekly, to introduce the duck. Aflac! And ask the Aflac trivia question of the week. Which coach has the most wins in the Georgia-Auburn series? And it's uh, 114 games, including this one, that have been played. Gene Chizik in his second as a head coach. Three years as a defensive coordinator here. On second down. Flag is down. It's a first down if the play stands, but the flag came from the umpire. And that usually means in this circumstance, this thing is going to go south. Well, Auburn was almost daring Georgia to throw the ball on that second down play. They had nine players near the line of scrimmage. It's going to go south, but not all that far. Personal foul. Shot block. Oh. On the offense, number 78. That penalty was 15 yards from the previous spot. Second down. Josh Davis. I think it's going to be on fairly. Let's see who gets them. Engage and hit. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's oh, the one. Yeah. Engaged by bowling and then a throw by Josh Davis. And I really uh, uh, applaud the officials for calling that one. That is the dangerous one for those defensive linemen. Second down, 17. Georgia in the eye. Murray throwing the ball to six of nine for 121 yards. He lost deep. He's got a man open. Oh, look at that. How about that? That is going to be about a yard short of the first down. It's A.J. Green again. And he got hit by our Mr. Nick Fairley just as he let it go. Fairley's favoring that right shoulder. A.J. Green flanked out to the right. Let's see the route. Comes off. Not enough of a jam. Not even a straight cut to the inside, just too fast and a perfect throw. Watch Nick Fairley. He lands right on his right shoulder. So both the two guys that are injured, both of them, take one on that one. Third and one. Look at the split on this play. Look at the keep. Murray around the corner. And he's got a first down at the 50. That gives us a chance to go back to Tim Brando in New York. All right, Vern, back to Eamon Carter in Fort Worth. We said it was early, and Andy Dalton knows that. He hits Logan Brock with a 15-yard strike. The extra point was missed. San Diego State still up by one, 14 to 13. Back to you. Okay, Tim, thank you. First down at the 50. That was an odd formation. Let's look for that one later if they might have something tied up to that. Play fake. Nobody open. Good coverage by Nico Thorpe down the right side. It was only a two man route that time. When you keep your tight end and both of your backs in, it's pretty easy to cover those guys down the field. That was Tavares King, who was the intended receiver. And it brings up second down and 10. 5.15 to go. Georgia has won the last. 
four games in the, this series. So no Auburn senior has ever won against the Bulldogs in their career here. Caleb King got him. Third down. Mick Fairley, Corey Lemonier, number 55. Fairley having an All-American season. He absolutely is. Drake Nevis from LSU says, thank you, Nick Fairley, because your great play inspired me to have a great one the next week. This is a must stop for Auburn. Remember, Georgia has the ball, Georgia has the lead, and Georgia gets the second half kickoff. Third and 10. Flag. Might not have gotten the play called in time. Before the snap, false start. Ah. 71 on the offense. The penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Third down. Well, if Cam Newton's the most valuable player in the SEC. A.J. Green might be the second most valuable player in this conference. He glides, he catches, he juggles, he shoves off. Ah. But he judges the ball perfectly. Third and 15. He's top of your screen, and Nico Thorpe is playing well back. An inside pass is incomplete. Looks like it was intended for Caleb King and Mike Blanc, number 93, got in there to mess things up. Fourth down. Well, that was a great defensive stand by Auburn. Got a little help with the up, the penalty play to make it third and very long, but they had to have that stop. Be very interested now how Gus Malzahn handles this four-minute clock. He does not want to give the ball back to Georgia. Drew Butler is on the punt. Not a great one. No, and it takes an Auburn bounce. Pick it up and run with it. It's free ball if you're Auburn. <laughs> Once Georgia touches the ball, Auburn can pick it up freely and run with it and have no consequences. Hmm. Didn't. Now it's going to be spotted, it appears, at the 26. Let's... Officially, it's called a 28-yard punt. Well, there's the touch. Here's Gamble. <laughs> All right, Tim, I thought that might have been a misprint. 83 points. Hmm. Well, time now to answer the AFLAC trivia question. Which coach has the most wins in Georgia Auburn series history? I got this one wrong. Shook Jordan, 15. Assistant coach at Georgia in 46 to 50, and then head coach here. A lot of great coaches have uh, dual identities. Here's Vince Dooley, Auburn and Georgia head coach, and Pat Dye. The Georgia guard from 58 to 60, and the head coach here, 81 to 92. Gene Chizik, 0 and 2 against Mark Rick's team. Mark Rick was talking with us Friday about the biggest win in his 10 years in Georgia, and it came here 2002 as David Green and Michael Johnson hooked up on a touchdown on a fourth and 15 from the 19. Here's a quick flip, and uh, the Bulldogs won that one 24 21 and won the SEC championship for that night. Here we go, 337. What do you expect from him? I, I think that they're going to try to take clock and at least get it under the two minute mark before they really look at that. They are taking their time. This is not the hurry up. Oh, I tell you, this Georgia wow. defense is playing. 
That's Akeem Dent, number 51. Trying to run power isolation inside, runs behind the block that time. Actually, he didn't stay with Eric Smith. If the running back would have stayed with Smith, I think he would have picked it up. Poor Reed. Out of the spread on third and one. Last time in third and short, they passed. I don't see it this time. I think they're going to run the ball. With Newton. And he's got the first down at the 40 yard line. Remember last time Vernon was at third and a yard and a half and yes. had the matchup. You know, you got an Auburn team that's averaging over 300 yards rushing a game in the SEC, and they call a pass play on third and short, which surprised me. And Todd Grantham had him dialed in. Auburn does have all three timeouts remaining. First down 10 with 2.24 to go before the break. Newton with the play fake to McCaleb. Deep left side, wide open. But he caught. He threw that flat footed. Oh my goodness. Emery Blake on the cut was open by five yards. That's a 25 yard game. Yeah, all the way across the field. Newton flat footed just lets this thing go at the last second. Play action pass, rips it. He didn't even step into that throw. It was a wonderful route by Blake. And now the whole offense is there. And Gus Malzahn says, once I get over the 50, I have what I call landmark plays. I know where I want to call my plays from where I am on the field. Here's There's one the reverse, of them. Cody Burns, former quarterback. Throw it away. Nobody open. There it is. And he throws it away. And he was the starting quarterback in this game two years ago. And this was handled well by the Georgia defense. Trick play on first down, nothing. And so, 150 to go, second down, and 10. Cannot help but be impressed with Georgia's advancement on defense. They're so much more solid. They know where to line up than they did a year ago when I was watching them. Well, of course, they made three defensive coaching changes this year. There's the perfect pass to Fannin, but a nice open field tackle at the 32. Yeah. I mean, look, that was a well-executed play. What did they get, two yards? Yes. Well, last year, Georgia's defense, they uh, let go of three coaches headed by Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator. These are the numbers on your left last season. On your right, this is in the SEC. Now third down. Todd Grantham came in to take Willie Martinez's place, and they went to uh, a 3-4. Mark Rick's going to take a timeout here. And it comes with 114 doesn't remaining look, in the half. Doesn't look like he wanted the timeout, did he, right there? He was like saying something to the official that you misunderstood me, it looked like to me. Coming up at the half, the Geico Halftime Report. We're going to go back to our New York studios. Tim and Spencer are there, but we're uh, blessed with the presence of Mr. Tony Barnhart. So he's going to have an update. Uh, we're going to move out of the way and let Tony take over this spot. Coming up with the Geico halftime report. Third down and eight. It's a 50 yard field goal if they gain nothing. I, I, I would bet this ball stays on the ground. I don't know. Cam's earned the right to throw it. I will say that. But they could force Georgia into the last timeout if they don't make it. Georgia bringing three. Newton has it. Little stutter step. Newton first down at the 20. That's never he's a, a bad call. He's a it? weapon. Isn't yes, he? he is. Yeah, keep it on the ground. Yeah, keep it on the ground. The clock is going to start. Auburn has all three timeouts. If you don't make it, you're going to move it forward for a field goal try. And if you do, you have plenty of time. Well, Newton is now thrown for 93, and he's gained 90 on the ground. Gives it off to McCaleb to start. It's uh, Mario Fanning. And now, again, Auburn with all three timeouts left. 56 seconds to go. You know who's been quiet is Michael Dyer. I really yeah. thought we would see a lot of Dyer in this game, and we have not seen much start up. Well, he is on the bench, and he's being looked at, it looks like to me. Not catch what happened to Dyer. I thought we would see a lot of Dyer in this game. There he is. 
Four carries so far for only 19 yards. Time call. Cam Newton, the starting quarterback today. He's thrown for 93 and rushed for 90. Yeah, he has started out, remember, in this football game, scramble early, then that run down the sideline for the touchdown to make it seven to nothing. Then they started to go through the air. Great pass, dropped by Blake. That actually produced a score for Georgia, but then look at this throw. That's about as good as you can do. Now it seems that Newton is quiet. But he has 90 rush yards. And remember, that includes two sacks for minus 10. Michael Dyer, by the way, is back in the football game. Wearing number five at second down and eight. Newton still has it. Drills it in the end zone. Oh, my. Caught. Touchdown, Philip Watson Kirkin. I was hoping I'd get to say that today. Ladies and gentlemen, this just is not that easy to do. This is another bullet by a guy that's rushed for 100 yards in the first half. Remember, he's had a couple sacks. Gus Malzahn says, you're a freak. <laughs> Lutzen Kirkin's third catch of the year for a TD. Wes Byram's extra point is up and good. Now remember, he's rushed for, as Bo Jackson just gives him a handshake right there, he's rushed for 100, and he's 9 for 11 throwing with two drops. And so the Auburn Tigers have come from 14 down and tied it at 21. Cam Newton out of Westlake High School College Park, Georgia. Nine of 11, 111 yards and a touchdown pass. He caught that one, put it in the arms of Philip Lutzenkirchen. Hudson Kirk had had to catch that one. It would have gone right through him. <laughs> Do you see the sign? Yes, we can with Bo's picture on it right there. Yep. <laughs> with uh, Cam's picture. There we go. <laughs> yes, we can. West Byram getting ready to kick off, 51 seconds to go. Georgia has one left, Auburn has two. Brandon Boykin is the deep back, number two for the Bulldogs. I'd love to be playing in this game. Would you? Yeah, Georgia, this has got to be as fun as it can get if you're five and five and get to play against us. Perfect weather. Boykin at the three. Got and dropped at the 20, and let's uh, revisit the touchdown. We gave Mike Bobo an attaboy on a play call. Now watch this one. Watch the subtle roll by Cam Newton and what it does. It draws the safety over. Look how wide the safety is. The half roll produced the seam, and that's, again, a design by a coach to make that play. And you know what? Comes to the sideline. Bo knows talent. <laughs> Bo Jackson, one of two previous Heisman Trophy winners at Auburn University, the other being Pat Sullivan. Caleb King goes right. Oh, boy. Stevens, the linebacker, got him. Number 46 with help from Josh Bynes, number 17. Watch Georgia two out of the last three weeks, and they have competed like mad. We asked Mark Rick, you know, it's such tough loss against Florida. Can you get your guys ready again? He goes, yes, I love this team. And it's a very good team. And we will show up and we will play. Georgia has uh, decided to save itself for the second half. They trailed by seven. 
They went up 21 to 7. Auburn came back, led by Cam Newton. And we have reached the halftime 21 21. The undefeated and second ranked Auburn Tigers against a 5 and 5 tenacious Georgia Bulldog team. Let's get on to Tracy with Gene Chiswick. Thanks, Vern. Coach, you started out slow. It seemed like a lack of focus with your team and then the huge game-tying touchdown. So what was the difference in that half? Well, I think early on our whole team was really excited. They were, you know, we're making stupid penalties, giving up some deep plays. We turned the ball over early, which is unusual for us. We just had to get our team settled down and they got to start playing. Speaking of settling down, how about Cam and his focus after everything that's gone on this week? Well, I think he's been really focused. You know, he's just got to continue to be more consistent in this game. We got to get him uh, a few more runs, and, and he's got to be able to break a few more runs. But right now, we just got to be a more consistent team. Thank you a lot. Thank you. All right, that's the end of the first half with our score 21 all. Now let's go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. All right, Vern, thank you. Coming up on the Wide open in the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Auburn! Well, it seems appropriate, does it not? As Nova looks on, we're tied at the half. 21-21. Moments ago, Tracy Wolfson with Mark Richt. You jumped out to a 21-7 lead, but they were able to tie it to go into half. How did they get back in this game? Well, they just made some stops on defense, and, and you know, they're a heck of an offensive football team. It's just a great, it's a foot, great football game right now. Good 30 minutes. Now we got to go finish. AJ Green, two touchdowns, 114 yards receiving. How has he been so successful so far? Well, we've got some one-on-one -on -one matchups, and the the one catch he had on fourth down was a situation that we thought we had a good shot at uh, getting a one-on-one -on -one post and that type of deal. So. Uh, Coach Bobo did a good job of installing the play, repping it, and then, you know, having the nerve to call it. Thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Bird. All right, Tracy, thank you. Anything you want to add to that? Well, you know what kind of reminds me of a little bit is Mark Rick has a little bit of experience with this. He was the offensive coordinator for Florida State when they faced Michael Vick, a quarterback very much like Cam Newton, where they had to basically outscore them. He had Winky and Peter Warwick. Remember those guys? He was calling play, so he can understand it's not going to be a lot of stops. You're just going to have to keep chucking it. Well, that memorable game in the Sugar Bowl after the 19. 99 season. Third quarter. Boykin is back. A dribble onside kick onside. Kick. Whoa. Onside kick. Guess what? It worked. How about that? Rolling the dice. My gosh, how about that? This is a Sean Payton call right here in the Super Bowl when they just rolled the dice and it worked. Wes Byram kicked it off the top of the football, allowed it to go the 10 yards up and into his hands. I don't think there's any question that it went the necessary 10. That was perfectly executed, wasn't it? Now there is a player down. Gene Chizik is out. That's Chris Davis, a cornerback. Let's see if we can see this on the right side of the screen. We're told number 11 right here. Oh, tries to stick his head in there. You can see. He tries to get up and then can't. Uh, that's a good sign, though. Yeah, sure is. Chris Davis, number 11. Well, they've stolen a possession, has Auburn, haven't they? How about that? You only get about 12 or 13 a game, a game and they've stolen the first half 
They had the first half, and now they've stolen the second half. Opening drive. And so a first down from the Auburn 41, and now. They are reviewing it. Previous play is under further review. What were they doing all that time? I, got, I was just thinking that. Well, that one is not going to show much there. Nope. And, unless it was that eagle back there that was watching it. <laughs> All right, this is the replay you've already seen. Boom. Does he touch it before it goes? Oh. Uh, Does his left hand touch the ball across the line? Right there. Does he help it across the line? Now remember, we don't have an angle right down the line, so we don't know. And it was called good on the field. Right. I don't see this one being overturned. I think I might have to apologize to the replay official. That that's close enough to look. Especially if I bump into him in the elevator too. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a it's like a turnover basically. You know, I mean this is all oh, half. George is going over first series. Here's what they're going to do. Does he touch it? Well, he actually grabs it. He doesn't look there like he helped it across. Just a guess. It's going to. Not enough evidence. No, no way. no way. I don't think yeah, so. I don't think so either. How about that discussion in the locker room at halftime? Okay. That's what I said. That was a Sean, Sean Payton just called. Yep, Sean Payton. He said he's enjoying the game. That's what I said. Only that was Super Bowl. Really you know. like to see you <laughs> open the third quarter with an onside kick. Remember, it's the 50, it's the 40 yard line. Further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. And so. That's a fairly pretty shot, isn't it? Looking west, obviously. Here's Chiswick. Just a footnote. West Byron said, I knew it all along. First down and 10. Reverse. It is indeed. Zachary coming around the left side. Breaks a tackle. Gets a block from Cody Burns. And that gives him an extra 10 yards. Well, you start out with an onside kick and a reverse. Watch Cam gets a little block of the play. Again, well executed. Cam is right there to seal it. That's pretty easy. He's actually bigger than the defensive end. Watch and Cody it, Burns, Gary. Right Cody there. comes back at the end to clean it up. Yep. And then a quick snap, which is part of the game plan. Michael Dyer doesn't get much. Well, he picked up a couple. There's another player down. This player for Georgia. Looks like it's Demarcus Dobbs, number 58. Time has been taken. And we'll step away for a moment. Here it is right here. Marcus Dobbs is going to fall into Brandon Mosley. His head gets jarred back. Not sure if it was Mosley, but you saw his head snap back, and it's good news that he walked off. Yep, yep. Looks like he's going to be just fine. Well, we're underway with the third quarter. I had this hard nosed investigative question to ask you like what do you expect in the second half? Yeah, right. And we already know. Well, you got two hot quarterbacks. Right. And then you've got a great player in A.J. Green and a great player in Nick Fairley. Seems to me the game is going to go right there. Can Fairley 
continue to dominate or will A.J. Green continue to dominate? I think that could be the difference in the football game. I don't think Murray and Cam Newton are going to slow down. Second down and six. Well, officially call it seven. Here's Newton up the middle. That's going to be short of the first down, just inside the 20. Halftime trends. Well, you see it. We talked about Aaron Murray. I mean, of those seven out of 10, 12, Vern, I guess three of them he threw away. Cam Newton, two of them were dropped. That's only his passing. You remember he rushed, obviously, right there. And then A.J. Green. Auburn is going to be forced to double team them, him. And then Auburn comes back, especially that last touchdown to end the half. That really made it, I think, going into halftime, the ability to go for the onside kick. Third and one. Newton keeps it. First down at the 15 yard line. And they're going to hurry. They're going to yeah. hurry. Look at now's on. Yep. Get out there. Newton now with an even 100 yards rushing. Brandon Mosley, number 75, looks back. Dyer, right side. Well, Not well much stopped. there. Yeah, well stopped. D'Angelo Tyson, number 94, makes it. Well, Cam Newton has now become the eighth overall to pass for 2,000 and rush for 1,000. First from the SEC. Ah, you say. What about that kid that played at Florida? He never rushed for more than 1,000 yards in a single season. He did score 20 touchdowns rushing and threw for 20 in a single year, and that's uh, within reach of Cam Newton. Now, here's Newton, right side. Same play he scored on before. Fights for additional yardage. I think it's just instincts. When you see this guy coming, the linebackers, when he comes across with that speed sweep, you have to try to get outside with him, and you end up overrunning it and take the block inside by Mike Berry that time. Third down, two. As much as you're taught by your coach to stay disciplined with your eyes, I think that speed guy going across the formation really gets you out of whack. 106 yards, five times this year. He has rushed for more than 170 in a single game. Yeah, they're going to have to take a timeout. Yeah. You don't see Auburn mess up formations much. They probably practice formation, li aligning for formations in practice more than any team I've seen. 21-21, important third down coming up. We'll be right back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Ally Bank. The Home Depot. Ford F-150. And by Bud Light. 87,451 paid in attendance. That's a full house. As you can see from 2,500 feet up, aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by MetLife. Third down, two. Are you just tempted to give it to Cam two straight plays and say no way they can stop us twice in a row? I mean, you went onside kick. Do you want to get seven points? Obviously, but, you know, I mean, you just say we're going for it on fourth down also. That's McCaleb with him. Here's Newton. There's one. Darts inside. It'll be first and goal. Pretty good option. Yeah. His rushing average is going to go down, obviously, when he runs these short yardage plays. But his value remains high. And you know what? And it does feel, I, I just have to say, it feels like George is doing a good job against them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how talented he is at throwing the ball. Well, uh, look at the Verizon Red Zone stats. They got the overshifted power to the right again. The two tackles to the right side. McCaleb is split wide to the left. Here's Newton going right. Cuts it up. Struggles. He's at the two. It'll be second down. Mosley and Zimba. Power. 
plus they pull another guard. They actually put four offensive linemen to one side of the ball. And there's an injured Georgia player down, D'Angelo Tyson. Get some medical uh, medical help. And you almost wonder if that was Cam Newton that caused that pop right there because he really put his head down or shoulders down and ran on that one with power. Turns it up. It was. I think so. Maybe his thigh or whatever. Appears to be okay. He will walk off unaided. Opening moments of the third quarter. If you uh, joined us late, it was not announced until one half hour before the game that Cam Newton, whose availability was in question, particularly the last couple of days, would be the starting quarterback. Topic of so much conversation and speculation this week. Here's the handoff, Michaela. Touchdown, Auburn. Ontario McCaleb. <laughs> West Byram for the extra point. Caleb from two. It's actually the same play that McCaleb scored earlier is going to come over. Watch Cody Burns here. Former quarterback gets moved out to wide receiver just enough, just enough to get in the way to make that crack right there. McCaleb turns it up. Boykin's the only one. He's not going to stop him. Well, there's Trooper Taylor, wide receiver coach. He can be dangerous. Sunset in Auburn, Alabama. And the Auburn Tigers have scored 21 in a row. Opened the third quarter with an onside kick. And they get a touchdown from Ontario McCaleb, his second of the day, to uh, go back on top by seven points for the second time in this ballgame. They opened the game with the touchdown drive, a quick one. And Cam Newton scored from 30 yards out, 7-0. Georgia with 21 unanswered. Auburn came back to tie it up at the half and now has taken the lead. Byron. Boykin back. This time almost a pooch kick and it's taken up at the 25 yard line. And Georgia's going to get good field position out of this at the 35. Sean Chappas, the fullback, came up to grab it. All right. Monday on CBS, don't miss a new episode of TV's number one new show, Hawaii 5 0. Monday only, CBS. Caleb King is behind Aaron Murray. Hand off to King, gets a good block from Chappas, but he still picks up only three. Craig Stevens, number 46, with the stop. Well, Georgia started this football game, obviously Auburn scored first, but then they had the nice drive, the turnover for a touchdown, and then the four-play drive on the long touchdown pass, okay, to AJ. The thing that strikes me is, with five minutes to go in the half, remember that? It was 21-14. They had the ball about midfield. Now they come back for their next real drive, and they're losing a 14-point swing. Second down here. That's Chappas, the fullback. A.J. Green in tight to the right. Play action. Here he comes. Murray in trouble. Nosa Igwe. Yeah, but Nick Fairley. Yeah, but <laughs> Watch Nick Fairley on this one. They cannot block this guy. Inside. Igwe's going to get the sack, but they cannot handle, and that's what forces Murray up in the pocket for the sack. Clint Bowling 
Ben Jones and Cordy Glenn have not been able to handle number 90. Third and 15. Pump once for A.J. Green. Deep for Chris Durham. Who got it? Did wow. Durham hang on? Wow. Oh, what a catch. What a catch. DeSharvin Bell was all over this play, and Chris Durham just went up and took it away from him. Durham goes about six foot five, and he's become more than a possession receiver for Georgia. Young man who missed the game with a bruised lung. Redshirt senior sat out all of last year. That one good for 28 yards. Play action, Murray again. Deep down the middle, has a man inside the 10. It's Orson Charles, his tight end. This time, Auburn did not play two deep zone. They played two safeties doubling. Watch the safety turn and run. There is no one in the middle of the field. They put it all on Darren Bates that time. That's just too easy. There was no safety even to be seen. That is a gain of 36 yards that comes on top of the 28-yard pickup on third and 17. This Aaron Murray is going to be a star, isn't he? Into the corner, A.J. Green. Demond Washington, that one's incomplete. Well, of course, Aaron Murray, uh, Joe Cox, the starter last year, but uh, Matthew Stafford, such a big part of Georgia's offense, now playing with Detroit in the NFL. This is their freshman comparison. Look at yeah. Murray all over the place. Well, two things to point out, to be fair to Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford was a true freshman. Murray redshirted, and Matthew Stafford didn't have number eight. That's a pretty good point. He's at the top of the screen. Tavares King is the inside man. Hand off Ely up the middle. Touchdown, Georgia. This Georgia team's awful impressive. This team has lost five games. Sean Ely set out a suspension the opening game of the season. Had a problem with uh, traffic violation. Here's Walsh with the extra point. It's up and it's good. And we are tied again. We've been tied at 7-7, 21-21, now 28-28. More to come, as they say in the promos. Midway through the third quarter, Georgia has just uh, had two huge plays, 28 yards and 36 yards to set up a touchdown run by LaShawn Ely, and we are notched at 28 all. 7.54 to go. Give half that touchdown to Chris Durham. That was a magnificent play. Yes, it was on third and 17. This is DeMond Washington at the one. Well, this is a critical weekend in the Southeastern Conference. Let's take a look at what's going on in the East. First of all, Big game tonight down in Gainesville as Florida and South Carolina tangle with each other. Steve Spurrier trying to lead South Carolina into the championship game for the first time in that school's history. They joined the SEC in 1992. And Georgia, of course, trying to become bowl eligible. And out west, if Auburn wins tonight, they are the West champions. Doesn't matter what happens against Alabama in their next game. Uh, it only matters uh, to those who follow Auburn and Alabama. Well, and, and being number one in the country, too. Well, yeah. They ain't getting in if they lose a the game, not this year. McCaleb. Jeez, this offense is... I 
mean, it just never stops. Under center this time. They don't do it very often. Speed sweep, looking straight down on it. Look at Cody Burns get out there and try to get some. That's a 48-yard gain. They'll try Dyer at right guard. And he moves it uh, probably eight yards when it's spotted at the 25-yard line. On second down, Dyer. Oh, what a great block he got. He did. Whoa, what a dandy. Is Cody Burns again? Well, first it started up front. Okay. He ran right behind Lee Zimba, Mike Berry. Watch the blocking right up front. Run right at him. Simba just blows his man off the line of scrimmage, and then Dyer just gets into the secondary. On first down, Dyer breaks a tackle, gets to the nine. There, there's another Let's Talk freshman. a little bit about Lee he, Zimba. Yeah, Lee Zimba is a great story. You know what he said to us yesterday? I said, Lee, come on. All this stuff you guys going through, he said, if there's any group that can handle it, it's us. We've got all coaching changes, offensive coordinator changes, offensive coordinators fired in the middle of the year. The fifth year seniors on this team and the seniors on this team can handle it. Lee Zimba starting his 49th consecutive game for Auburn. Next game against uh, Alabama, he sets a school record. Dyer to the five. You know, it's also happening here now. That is Auburn's 51st play. Georgia has 30. They are starting to get wore down. Remember, the goal for a Gus Malzahn offense. As you look at Dyer right there, passing Bo Jackson. I don't think he minds. No, he didn't like that one, I don't think. I'm going the other way on that one. Third down and short. They're pretty close to getting the goal of 80 plays. They have a chance. Here's Newton. Got it, first and goal. And you know, Vern, they may need 80 plays because their secondary is getting torched. Well, that is not news in this part no. of the country. In fact, we almost could have bet on it. Georgia passes for 241 yards a game. Auburn gives up 241 yards a game. They're at 201. Right. Yeah, this... Uh... Auburn defense, particularly the back four, has been suspect. Here's a quick toss. Michaela Smith in front with the block. Touchdown, Auburn. Eric Smith out of his open. Everybody could see him lay the clearing ball. So nicely put together. Did you see Auburn do the quick huddle and line up? What they did is outflank Georgia and with the alignment and snapped it quick before Georgia could adjust. Pitched it and let him run. Player down for Georgia on the far side of the field. Mark Richt uh, with Hubert Owens. This is Cummings, the cornerback. Watched a quick break out of the huddle. And what'll happen? Overload, only two people on balance to the strong side. Pitch it and go before anything can happen. And Eric Smith gets the block to spring him. Now that was on Sanders Cummings, and now you understand the injury. Mal's on on the left. Here's see, Sanders Cummings. See how well that's put together? That was the plan. Get down there. I know I'm going to run it. Quick huddle, line up, go on balance, toss it. West Byram for the extra point. He actually missed one a couple of weeks ago. There's a flag. The yeah, good news is you scored. The bad news is your defense has to yeah, go on the yeah. field. They have an inclination to make it exciting. Yes. False start. Seven to three on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. We'll have the try. Well, you talk about him and bingo. Lee Zimba. Has a sister, Rosalind, who's a journalism major at New York University. Said she watches every game and critiques him and the announcers. Byron's extra point is up and good.
But Caleb gets the touchdown. Clearing block from Eric Smith. Auburn has an answer. Gus Malzahn kind of pleased with that. Thirty-five, twenty-eight, five oh four to go, third quarter. So we've got 20 minutes of play. They announced during the timeout that Michael Dyer had surpassed Bo Jackson's freshman yardage gained record. And a very nice moment. Jackson came over to congratulate the freshman. How about this thing? <laughs> There you go. It's a moment Michael Dyer will never forget. <laughs> Nor will the policeman. <laughs> 504 to go. 35 28. Boykin to return another kickoff. a run down on kickoff. They earn their scholarship, but it's fun to watch when they cover one the right way. The ball was kicked very deep that time and handled, I think it was Darvin Adams, the it wide was. receiver, yes. one of their starting wide receivers that got the first hit. Then Craig Sanders, a linebacker, came up to complete it. Caleb King is the running back. King. Oh, it's it's real man football when you run the ball now. That was Michael Goggins, number 49. And Josh Bynes, the middle linebacker, was also in the neighborhood. I love watching these games when neither side will take a step back. Georgia's playing it. Auburn's playing it. And that time, Josh Bynes played it. Second down and seven. A.J. Green, bottom of the screen, hit screen. He's got Tavares King out to block. Lamont Washington was all over it. Let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Here's Tim. Vern, Gary keeping an eye on those one-loss teams. Uh, Penn State's Matt McGloin is going to throw his second pick six of the day. Travis Howard of Ohio State does the honors this time. 30 yards for the touchdown, now leading 31-14. to 14, 28 unanswered points. Back to you. Tim, thank you. Third down, four. Georgia, three of six so far, converting third downs. Aaron Murray with the change. Josh Bynes with the defensive change. Murray, a lot of time. Across the middle, in and out of the hands of his tight end, Aaron White. There's a flag back at the feet of Nick Fairley. I think Nick Fairley got a little frustrated. He's been getting double teamed. Watch Personal this. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 90 on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. The penalty carries an automatic first down. He has to go through Bowling and Jones, and then late, very late, he comes back and gets the penalty. And that's a third down conversion, and that was a bad one. Did you see Aaron Murray react? Yeah, so After he knew the it. the flag came, see, uh, gave it a little fist pump. Nick Fairley has to find the ball in the quarterback's hands. That's a bad one. That's one in the NFL you're going to cost you money. That would have been a punting situation. It's a fine line, though. He plays at such a high octane. A.J. Green in motion to the left. Here's Murray pump once. Chased. Pulls up. That's uh, thrown away. Second down 10. 
It's hard to turn off those guys right there. They're in the pits. They're getting hit every play. You're telling them to be aggressive. You're telling them to go in there and break up the blocking, and then you're telling them to be nice. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Don't forget to put a 20 in the offering. <laughs> Second down. King, shed a tackle, picks up a first down. Out across the 45, and he got a big block from number 49, Sean Sheppes. Well, this is just bad defense by Auburn. This ball play was run right into the teeth of the blitz that time, and Auburn ran right by it. They're going for the quarterback, and they did not account for the run play first. Looks like Zach Etheridge might have been uh, shaken up on the play. He comes to the near side. And he's important. Yes. He's the experience back there. They've got a lot of youth. Ball just outside the 45 yard line. Demetrius McNeil now goes in. Freshman. Green in the slot to the left. Murray is chased. Here comes Fairley, there goes the ball, it's a first down. And guess, oh he dropped oh, it. He dropped it. I, it might have been wow. knocked out of his hands. This might have been a good defensive play here. I think Demetrius McNeil might have got his hand on it. Let's see. Yes, you gotta give that one to the defense on that one. McNeil comes off the bench and makes the play. McNeil, a freshman out of College Park, Georgia, and near the Atlanta airport. Hometown also of Cam Newton. Second down. 35-28 with under three to go. Third quarter. Murray. Got away again. Pulls up, fires. Caught at the 35. A. J. Green. I tell you, Aaron Murray on this one. Watch this play coming from the left side. Corey Lemoner comes in. He spins out of it. Now he says, slow down. I got you, AJ. Come back and help me. Watch him lift the ball. Help me. I still got the ball right here. AJ Green comes back and look at him throw it going to his left. Green is now caught seven for 137 yards, first down. That's a wonderful play. Hand off up the middle, not this time. That's uh, Washawn Ely. How about this performance by Aaron Murray? Ooh. You know, he's 11 for 19, but I, I bet he has five throwaways in this football game. So he has, and he's spun away from two or three sacks at the same time. Don't forget this drive was given new life on a roughing the passer call on Nick Fairley on a third down that was incomplete. Murray back. Across the middle again. A.J. Green again. First down. Uh, they again. have no chance. No chance against A.J. Green. Last week, I thought A.J. was a little frustrated not getting the ball, well, two weeks ago, excuse me, against Florida. But right now, DeMond Washington and Auburn, they might as well just go for the blitz because if they don't get to the quarterback quickly, they have no chance with this guy. Eight receptions for 157. Wouldn't be a bad offense to throw to him almost every third yes. play. He's inside to the right. Here's Caleb King, tries a sweep to the left, and poor tackling yet again. That's to Charvin Bell who missed that one. Well, let's go down to Tracy Wilson with more on AJ.
Well, guys, a lot of A.J. Green's talents on the field can be traced to some of his passions growing up. His first love, basketball. He was an All-State player at Somerville High School, won a state championship there. And he said he learned his eye-hand coordination from juggling. And he also learned how to ride a motorcycle, a unicycle. He can do both of those things at the same time. And hey, guys, if you can't play in the NFL, he could always play in the, go to the circus, right? Yep. I can see him at Cirque du Soleil. Not. Second down. Murray into the end zone. Durham, it's too high. Yeah, that's about the first one he's missed yep. when he had an opportunity. Third and five. Chris Durham tries to get up there and grab that thing down with one hand. You know, the other positive for Georgia is that this will be the 11th play of the drive. So they've been able to give the Georgia defense a much needed rest. Third and five and Green in the slot. Goes left side. They tried to set up a little screen on the left. Looked like uh, Orson Charles was held up. This was going to be a throwback screen to the tight end. And Darren Bates, number 25, stays with his man. Does his job, number 25, to the left side. That was never going to be thrown to the out there. That was a screen all the way. Watch him do his assignment right there. That was going to be a throwback screen, and that was well defended. Here's the field goal attempt, Blair Walsh. That's good from 28. A drive that was given new life on a roughing the passer call results in three points for the Bulldogs the end of three it's 35 31 we'll return to Jordan Hare Stadium right after this word from your local station Just a moment ago as the teams switched ends to start the fourth. Cam Newton leading the Auburn Tigers toward the student section. 15 minutes to go. The undefeated Auburn Tigers trying to go 11 and 0. Georgia trying to become bowl eligible after a, a horrid start to this season. But they have righted the ship. They're 5 and 5. They trail now by 4 as we get the kickoff to start the fourth. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wolfson. And here is DeMond Washington out to the 21-yard line. And so it's back in the hands of Cameron Newton. And again, uh, we began the day talking about would he or won't he play. He has played and played well. Yes, he has. But now we're going to give him down to the fourth quarter. And will form hold is what I want to know. Auburn has won five close games in the fourth quarter. Right. Georgia has lost all five. South Carolina, Arkansas, Mississippi State, Colorado, and Florida. Now, what will happen in this game? They got something a little different. They've got a healthy quarterback, and they've got number eight. So let's see how this goes. Can Georgia win a close game this year? The difference from being number one and number two and being five and five, obviously. Right saw that uh, graphic they haven't done much uh, nor has uh, oh it's a handoff to Caleb again they run the old Statue of Liberty play for the second time last time in the first half a 40 yard gain eclipsed by an illegal block this time they don't get much I think it was Orlando McCaleb that said we just don't have trick plays. There's just our regular plays. They just trick people. Second down six. I said Orlando. I meant Ontario. Excuse me. That's OK. I've never visited that neighborhood. <laughs> Second down and six. There's Caleb going wide to the left. Three wide receivers split out. Here's Newton. Got that little hesitation. Yeah, that's the one that, <clears throat> excuse me, bothers me a lot when I watch uh, 
Cam just kind of stutter and stand there. I wonder why people don't go after him. Pull the guards, watch him wait, be patient, and then just follow inside with Isom. Third and one. It's going to be Newton. Well, his yards per carry is going to be short, but he's well over 100 yards. Let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. All right, Vern. Well, Andy Dalton does it in the air rather than on the ground. This is the first of four touchdown passes thrown today. TCU is now rolling against San Diego State. And a little Pac-10 flair. Number one, Oregon is led by LaMichael James, and uh, they'll try to stay unbeaten tonight at Cal. And Andrew Luck leads Stanford to Arizona State. All tonight. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. Auburn now 9 of 12 on third down conversions. Flag is down. This could be a free play. Well, Tim, with the update on the, the Heisman watch, of course, uh, for the last half of this season, Cam Newton has been the leading candidate. And I welcome your opinion on well, how all of this turmoil is going to affect You know what I'm very proud of? A, a lot of the guys that do what I do around the country have been saying, hey, let's just judge what's on the field and try to dis disregard what's going outside until it's proven. I think a lot of people are taking a healthy view of this, a mature view of this, and I think that's the way you have to do it. In my mind, in the 20 years of doing college football, Cam Newton's the most valuable player I've seen for his team, and I'll tell you why. Most of these other guys, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Texas, Florida, Alabama, had 10, 12, 15 guys draftable. There's not 10, 12, 15 draftable guys on this Auburn team. And yet they are undefeated. And here's Newton. Nice catch, Emory Blake. Out on the left side. That's another first down. Cam Newton, that's a gain of 13. A little square out. Delivers it. Nice catch that time. Emory Blake had the early drop, but he has come back and redeemed himself. Of course, he's the son of Jeff Blake, quarterback. That was the first pass play this half. And here's Michael Dyer around the left side. And uh, gets near the 45-yard line. Dyer out of uh, Little Rock, 8,000 yards rushing in a private high school there. Spurned the offer to go to uh, the University of Arkansas. And uh, he said it came down honest to gosh. Uh, he liked uh, Gus Malzahn a little more than he did the folks at the uh, university. Look at this. There is a flag on the offensive line. What do you mean there are no that's trick that, plays? That's that gimmick play right there, right? We, we saw that at Arkansas before, didn't we? Yes. Yes, we did. The snap, everybody freezes. Georgia doesn't know what to do. Offside. Let me let me say this though Auburn again is approaching 300 yards rushing in an SEC game. They are rushing for an average of 325 yards a game in the SEC. That's 130 more than the second place team which is LSU. Outside. Defense number 42. The pillager is five yards from the previous spot. Second down. 130 yards more than the second highest rushing team. Remember we saw them put what 440 yards on the ground up uh, in the game here. They can move it. Well George is moving it too. They're, yeah, three, they're 335 but these guys just produce yards on the ground just to eat it up. Ain't nobody can stop nobody. No they got the two tackles to the right side again. Yeah. Second down and a little over two feet for the first. Here's Newton. Now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete. We're going to select Mario Fannin, a graduate of Auburn University, graduated last summer in public administration, pursuing a second degree in education. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Auburn University's general scholarship fund. It's already six plays. This will be the seventh in this drive, reminiscent a little bit of that drive against now they pass it back. It's a gadget play. Got rid of it. And he overthrows McCaleb. 
Cody Burns was uh, involved. Oh boy. It, it, it reminds me a little bit of that Kentucky drive where they put the game away to kick the field goal late. What happens here, if they could drive this ball down and score a touchdown, they almost make it a two possession game for Georgia. They would have to score two touchdowns, maybe and only two possessions left for time. Second down and 10. Newton now 10 of 13 for 124. Throwing the ball. Oh, ah. Is he out of bounds? Yes, he is. So he threw the fastball on this one. Darvin Adams with the catch. That's a gain of 11. Watch him zip this one. Steps into it and zips it. Boy, that one hit him right in the eight and the nine, and you could hear it, couldn't you? Dyer goes left. Not much there. No hurry up. If you see right here, Gus Malzahn, who loves the hurry up, knows the clock is his friend now. Second down eight. Second and eight. Option pitch. McCaleb. Well defended. Oh boy, was it ever. Out on the edge, Brandon Boykin, number two. And uh, let's go down to Tracy for this injury update, Trace. Well, guys, cornerback Sanders Cummings, we saw him get injured on Auburn's last touchdown. He is out in the locker room right now with a right ankle injury, having x-rays, guys. All right, thank you. Third down, 11. A four-point game, 9.34 to go. Fannin is on the field. Blake Burns and Quindarius Carr to the right side. Here's that three-man look that Todd Grantham has come against the spread. With the spot. Newton. First down, Auburn. The spy who got lost. Was this time the guy spy that got blocked on this one? Mike Berry got the spy. That's what I said before. Put a spy, you need Ray Lewis. Yes. Got caught up in trash that time. Alec Ogletree was the guy who was spying, and he just got too tight to the line of scrimmage. That was a gain of 14. Newton now with 25 carries, 138 yards. No. McCaleb. He gives away two. Oh, is it? Yes, it is, McCaleb. And Marcus Doughton, number 38, made the tackle. Player down for Georgia. That's Ruben Faluji. So time has been taken. How about the sophistication of the, flat, uh, the fans here? They're booing because they think that he's faking an injury to slow down the Auburn offense. Right. Well, here's McCaleb getting tackled. The injury occurred on the other side of the field. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Big question of the last two days was would Cam Newton start at quarterback in this game or would he not? And the announcement made about a half an hour before the kickoff. Newton immediately scored the first touchdown on a 31-yard run. Auburn went up 7-0. But Aaron Murray had a wonderful first half. Three touchdown passes in the half, including this beautiful strike to A.J. Green. That gave them a 21-7 lead. McCaleb, Ontario McCaleb, cut it to 21-14 on the four-yard run. And then Cam Newton with his 18-yard pass to Lutzen Kirchen, where we were tied at 21 all at the break. McCaleb, third quarter, left side, 28-21. Wishon Ely came back for the Bulldogs to notch it at 28 all. And then McCaleb on a four-yard run around the right side. 
gave Auburn a 35 28 lead and just a few moments ago a touch a uh, field goal from Walsh of 28 yards and that is where we stand 35 31 with 822 to go. Well Gus Malzahn now has to grab his best play that if you're Auburn you do not want to kick a field goal and make it a game that it's a one possession game. What does Todd Grantham do? Defensive coordinator for Georgia. Does he come after him? Does he dare blitz? Let's see if he does it. Second down and 10. McCaleb fires it. Wide open. Watson Kirkin for the second time. And goes to Lutzen Kirkham. I said Malzahn's going to grab his best play, and he did, and it worked. Ogletree right here. Let's see if he freezes on the play. Fake the sweep, takes one step in, and it's gone. Takes one step, you freeze. I'll tell you what, when you have a Lucton Kirk go by you, you know you froze. I've never had that happen before. <laughs>
Play fake. Murray has to tuck it, shakes the tackle, hit from behind. An official goes down. Lost his helmet. Where is it? To Sharvin Bell. There you go. That's Russ Pulley. Hatless. Right at him. Boom. A little bit of a backlash and then gets run over there by, was it Josh Davis? Yes. It was Josh Davis. It's got to be four down territory. There's not enough time yet to punt this left to punt the ball. Third and four. Blitz threatened. Murray with the chain. Oh, they're coming. As they do, got him. Ball's out. From behind. Who got it? Looked like Antoine Carter with the hit. And apparently, Georgia with the recovery. You'll see the blitz inside, and then Carter comes around the outside and makes the play. Inside, Carter comes right around the outside and beats third of it. And they're going for it. Basically, this is a trip to Atlanta right here for Auburn. Hit as he lets it go. Auburn football. Atlanta's only an hour and a half away. And Nick Farrelly made the play. Watch Fairley inside. Igwe also comes around, but Fairley gets the play. What a play. What a player. What a season. Well, Nick Fairley has had some impact on this. And I was game. down on the field. This is a much bigger man than you realize when you're watching it on TV. 6'5", over 300 pounds, all out, north-south player. He demands two guys block him most of the game. And when he turns up field, he is a sack machine. And you saw him reach for the belt. He's the champion tonight. Heavyweight champion, Danae. 542 to go. Auburn with a victory, cinches the SEC West. And a berth in the championship game. They're currently second in the BCS standings. That's not going to change after this one is over. Let's go back to Tim in New York. All right, Vern, how about eight in a row now for Virginia Tech? Tyrod Taylor finds Marcus Davis with his touchdown catch to make it 26 to 10. The Hokies must beat Miami next week to clinch the Coastal title. If they can do it, they will. NC State, Maryland, both winning, creating a three-way tie with Florida State for first in the Atlantic. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. Second down here, 5.07 to go. Cody Burns, Cameron Newton, first down. Flag is down. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the defense, number two. That penalty is half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, first down. Well, Gene Chizik, how about the job he's done in this game, Vern? He's one of those second-year coaches. Remember, in the second year, Bobby Stoops, Tressel, Urban Meyer all won national championships. He needs two more to get in a national championship game in his second year. Well, we mentioned Gene was a defensive coordinator here for three years under Tommy Tuberville. Went to uh, Texas, worked with Mac Brown. 
Here's Newton on the first play. Newton is down. Oh, they flew at him. Anything Man, but a turnover tough. right now. Cuff took a shot. Yeah, and well, you can't blame Vance Cuff. I mean, on this play, you don't know if Cam Newton's going to turn up and, and run or he's going to slide. Let's look at this play. He's got a 6'6", 260-pound guy, and eh. I, I wouldn't throw okay. the flag at him. They wouldn't in the NFL, but I wouldn't do it in college. 42-31. Hug <laughs> of the eighth. He's about to lose his second. Somehow right now that's not really relevant. I mean, just think about it. Nick Saban in his second year went 12 and 2. Remember he was number one before he lost his last two games. Newton, he went down inside the 10. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by MetLife. Three and a half to go. Georgia used one uses. One of its allotment of three timeouts. We'll be right back. We mentioned uh, a moment ago that Gene Chizik, three years on the staff here, then Mac Brown at Texas. He was hired as the head coach at Iowa State. He was there for two years. His record at Ooh. Iowa State, five wins and 19 defeats. With a victory here in his second season at Auburn. 19 wins and five defeats. He's getting to 500. Michaela, flag is down. Michaela is as well. So that'll stop the clock with the penalty flag down. And you think back, I mean, I vividly remember when they let Tommy Tuberville go. Jay Jacobs, the athletic director, athletic council here, announced the hiring of Gene Chizik to come back home. Yep. And that was met with a chorus of boos. Personal foul, face mask, defense number two. That penalty is half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Carries an automatic first down. And then they, you know, he came in. Yeah. He's an easygoing guy for the most part, I think. Well, at least that's the way we see him. Yes, right? exactly. Right. Except when he's saying no comment. And uh, he said that to us a few times. No, I saw him out at practice. He gets on his football team. I'll okay. tell you that. Well, he's about to go 19 and 5 at Auburn. Keep this team undefeated. Well, it, it, it is an amazing story. I mean, you know, it looked like Auburn had a, a nice schedule, but nobody could have dreamed that Cam Newton was going to be this type of football player. Nobody. Backs toward the goal line. Uh, but let's. And he stopped short. Well, this was the first touchdown of the afternoon. Newton from 31. This one deflected. Emery Blake dropped it, intercepted. And then he put on a show. Pinpoint passing, over 100 yards rushing. He was on target all day. Two minutes, 51 seconds to go. George was called time. Now this was just about in the history books, 251 to go, and we invite you to stay tuned for the Jeep post game show. Tim and Spencer, that's next on CBS Sports. Cam Newton, 29 carries, 150 yards. It's second and goal. Here's Newton. He fumbles it. He did. But he was across the plane. It's a touchdown. The ball got loose, but it was after Newton had scored the touchdown. At least that's the way it's called on the field. Yes, exactly. Let's see what we got here. Good point. Pretty close, Ooh, wasn't it? Oh, it is. But we got that camera right on the goal, it goal is. line. I don't know if he got over or not when it starts to. Ruling on the field is that the bio carrier broke the plane of the goal line. Touchdown. Now remember, you do not have to cross the line. Right. You only need to touch the front end of the line. This is a big play here. George's only chance is just a turnover. 
overturned, excuse me. And there is no stoppage of play for the review. No, it don't stop. Now it does. Previous play is under further review. Second look. Oh, he's got that. Yep. He's going to get a touchdown on that one. Yep. You know now, Vern going first circle on this. What's going to happen? I mean, this story, as we talked about, it's not going away. Is this going to be like the Duke lacrosse case where the allegations never turned out? Or is it going to be I can do a litany here? Clemens, Bonds, Daniel Monte, Rafael Palmero, Marion Jones, Ben, Ben Johnson. I mean, you know, this is what the sports public looks at. Like, how is this going to end up? This would be crushing for college football. This feel good story if it doesn't turn out. Well, I, it is. I, I agree. Right. I go back to the action that Auburn took at the beginning of the year. After further review. The ruling on, on the field is confirmed. It is a touchdown. They made a decision to have Cam Newton play from the very first game. Right. Georgia held out A.J. Green just in case. Alabama held out Marcel De Darius just in case. I believe the Auburn Athletic Department and the coaching staff were convinced by, by evidence we don't know about that Cam Newton oh, yeah. I'm was not, okay. Right. Uh, I don't want to jump on a soapbox here. I want to just say this is such a great story. I think college football plan fans are saying, please don't break our hearts. And now it's time for the Chick-fil-A player of the game. Well, we're going to call it coach of the game this time. Because Gene Chizik got his team ready in the middle of all this and got him to play a football game. His record is now even at 24 and 24. Graduate of the University of Florida, 1985. I read a story this week, Gary, that Jay Jacobs, the athletic director, was asked when he decided to hire Gene Chizik and he said the minute he packed his bags and headed to Austin to work with Mac Brown. He knew he was a special one. Yeah. The kickoff Boykin. He's got to be exhausted. Down. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? I, one of the great things I think for Auburn now this is going to just be unbelievable emotion winning for Lee Zimba, all he's went through, winning the SEC West. They're going to go crazy, but they're going to have that off week to come down, calm down, and then put their sights on Alabama. No member of this uh, Auburn team has ever defeated the Georgia Bulldogs. Four seniors in that offensive line, Zimba and his friends. Here's Murray. Caught. A.J. Green is just having an incredible night. Brandon Mosley, number 75, his insertion into the offensive line. Uh, his coaching staff attributes his starting to kind of solidifying yeah, that. Yeah, the that final group. piece. Yeah. Here's Murray airing it out, deep left side. Oh, he mistimed it. I've been watching him for three years. Might not get to watch him again on Saturday. But this is one of the few I've ever seen him miss time. Watch him go up and jump just a little too early. To Sharvin Bell was defending its third down. To Sharvin just said, I can't wait to watch you on Sundays. <laughs> Auburn about to go 11 and 0. They were. Undefeated in 1957, ironically on probation that year. Undefeated in 93, ironically on probation 
undefeated in 2000 and four and did not get invited to the BCA S championship game and Murray is down. Ouch. Let's see who gets them this time. No, oh, fairly. Geez. Yeah. He's being blocked inside on the play by Cordy Glenn, but he just keeps going. Right on the knee. That ball was clearly out of his hands again. Hudson Mason is the backup, has played a, a limited amount of time this year. Ball clearly gone, gets blocked on the play, falling into him, not called a penalty. And for Georgia and Mark Richt, they got to be holding their breath with their quarterback. Vern, they're five and six. They got Georgia Tech. To get bowl eligible. And, yep. they, and they can't afford to lose that guy. Right. Last time they missed was 96. Jim Donnan was in his first year as the head coach in Athens. I wonder if that couldn't have been a hyperextension. Right? Well, I know when I blew my knee, I walked off the field and I had to have surgery. Really? Yep. Never know. So Mason is in. His first pass attempt as a Georgia Bulldog was a 26 yard TD, and this is going to be a handoff. <laughs> And a fist fight breaks out. Oh, Georgia has to stay on the sideline. They were fist thrown. Yes, but their players need to stay on the sideline. Yep. The Auburn players have not taken one step out. No. Trooper Taylor. At, they were coming after Nick Fairley yep. and why they were doing it. And Trooper Taylor. The, that was a payback. What? They were going to go after Nick Fairley on that play because of the shot on the quarterback. And to see what Mark Rick said. That's what you get when you don't call penalties on the guy. He's been hitting our quarterback late all day. That was, was his brother, Josh Murray. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry that was Josh Murray's brother. Watch. Let's see what happens to Fairley. Oh, yeah, they went after him. After the play. That was Ben Jones, number 61, who was one of After the, the play was over. Personal foul. Number 60 on the offense. After the play was over. Personal foul. Number 49 on the defense. He threw a punch. 49 is ejected from the ball game. That's Goggins, Michael Goggins. Of Auburn and Clint Both bowling. villages are dead ball. They cancel. That means that Michael Goggins, I believe, if I'm correct, is out for the first half of the Alabama game. And Trooper Taylor's doing a good job of keeping him. They need fairly for both halves against Alabama. So Goggins ejected. And the punch was uh, right out of the open. Remember, they play Alabama next. Even though it's two weeks away, he will have to sit out the first half. Boom, there's the punch. And that has been confirmed, Gary. Fairley is on the bench. Sacked. It'll be third down. D4, number 95. Third down, 16 from the 20. Third and 16. Mason, the quarterback, handoff right side. Flag is down, thrown by the referee. 
He was back. Uh, in there the, might uh, be another one. The Georgia bench is irate for that shot that Aaron Murray took late in the game. I mean, I, I just, I don't think it, I could have been called a penalty unfairly. I don't think it was a dirty shot. He was going for the quarterback. Yeah, I didn't think so I either. mean, it could have yeah. been called as a penalty because the ball was clearly gone, but he didn't do anything maliciously on the play. Fouls on the play. Holding. Number seven on the offense. That penalty is enforced, enforced from the previous spot. After the play was over, personal foul. Number 93 on the defense. He threw a punch. That penalty is 15 yards from the succeeding spot. It carries an automatic first down. And number 93 is ejected from the ball game. And that's yeah. two defensive, two defensive linemen. linemen. And if I'm Gene Chizik right now, I get my starters. I get them off the field. That's two starters that will not be available. First half. Against Alabama. Against Alabama. Both backups. I will admit they're both backups. But I'm getting all my starters off the field. And I might even call a timeout right here to preach to them what the ramifications are of getting thrown out of the game. Chizzy was talking to his defensive line coach, one of the great players in Auburn history, Tracy Rocker. Now they're going to take a knee and get out of here. Well, it's an unfortunate ending to this game. But a Gatorade bath for the Auburn head coach. They are the champions of the SEC West. Aaron Murray able to walk out unaided. Cam Newton able to run toward the student section unaided. Here goes Newton up on the wall. Well, what's going to happen next? As far as we're concerned, the Jeep postgame show. Ole Miss at LSU next week for Tracy Wolfson. Gary Danielson, Greg Silver, Steve Milton down in the truck, our entire crew. Congratulations to the Auburn Tigers. They are 11 and 0. We'll see you next week. CBS Sports presents the Jeep Post Game Show. We welcome you to the Jeep Post Game Show. Tim Brando in New York. A reminder tonight on CBS, it's a lineup filled with drama and mystery, beginning with The Mentalist, followed by Hawaii 5 and a new edition of 48 Hours Mystery. That's all coming up tonight, only CBS. In the game you just saw, Auburn punched its ticket to the SEC championship game by beating Georgia 49-31. to Now let's go back out to Auburn, where Tracy Wolfson spoke with Tigers head coach Gene Chizik a short time ago. Coach, after everything that happened this week, the allegations, the will he, won't he, how were you able to get your team to stay focused, win the West, and beat your rival today? I cannot give enough credit to our seniors. We are so blessed, man. We have 20-plus seniors. They, uh, they, they never sweat. We were down 14 points in the game tonight. We were playing sloppy at the beginning. They never get down. They never lose track. They just stay focused, and they find a way to win, and that's how we did it. And how about Cam Newton and the resiliency he showed coming out here and playing a nearly flawless game? Let me tell you something. He's a rock. He's solid as a rock. This is one of the best young men I've ever been around. I am so proud of him. He played a great game tonight along with the rest of our football team. Right now, we deserve to be the SEC West champs. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Thanks, Tracy.